Hello. I know you can hear me, but I know you can't see me. And that's because I'm here to tell you about the dark. The dark is out there, and it's coming. So beware, and be careful. Don't let it get you. Hello, and, uh, uh, hold on. Hello, and welcome to chapter 12 of book one of You Should Be Reading. Today, I'm going to talk about this book, The Time of the Dark, by Barbara Hambly. Now, The Time of the Dark is an older school uh, fantasy book. It is about two worlds one of which is Earth, and one of which is the other world. Uh, Darwath, I believe is the name. <clears throat> it is about the dark, and the dark coming back after a long period that no one had seen it, no one had heard it. This mythical, ancient force of evil that destroyed humanity and pushed what was left into a world tucked away, hidden away in fortresses, safe from the touch of the dark, until they finally came out hundreds of years later. It is about this world. This world that has, that this particular story is the myth that everyone knows, the legend, and nobody really believes it's true until... All of a sudden, boom, of the dark is back. Now, what's really interesting is that this particular book is all about a group of people, um, two of which are from Earth, one of which is a woman who is a history uh, student in, I believe she's a student, history student in uh, college on Earth, uh, a lady named Gill. Uh, the other is this kind of aimless drifter type named Rudy, who's pretty good with his hands, knows his way around cars, that sort of thing. Uh, these two end up coming together and meeting for the first time in a rundown cabin in the middle of nowhere, uh, where they run into a wizard by the name of Ingold Inglorian. Uh, this wizard has just come from Darwath by passing through the, the void. Um, and with him is the newborn baby prince of Darwath. Or Prince of Dar, I should say. And he... He is... He brought this baby here to save it from the dark and ends up bringing it back when the dark tracks him down on Earth. Now, the really interesting thing is that when he goes back, he takes Gil and Rudy with him. Uh, much to his... It's, it's not something he wanted to do, but it's something he had to do to save their lives. And as you can see from the cover, it has Ingold sitting in the kitchen table on Earth. He's got a sword, he's got a staff, and he's got a can of beer in his hands. It's not really the sort of thing that was normally seen of wizards and normally thought of. And it's one of the few things that really caught my eye when I first wanted to check this book out. I ended up getting the opportunity to meet with Barbara Hambly uh, several years ago, uh, getting to talk to her uh, with another group of people, and got to see a little bit about her, 
and her mindset, her her personality. And after having met her and having reread these books again, I am impressed with how how much of her particular personality kind of shines through. Not not strongly, but it, it's there if you know what to look for. There is a definite sense of humor in these books. There is a definite sense of not only wonder, but a sense of epic storytelling, if you will. A sense that she, what she's telling is something that you are meant to be emotionally invested in. And it's something easy to get emotionally invested in these characters. Uh, not only are there refugees, there are evil forces at work that aren't just the dark. Humanity's evil forces. People being pushed together into this last-ditch uh, effort to try and survive. And it, it shows through. This is the first book of a trilogy. Well, not really a trilogy. Well, it is, but it isn't. She, she wrote the first three books, uh, of which this one is The Time of the Dark, and it is the first book. There are two others after it, which wrap up the general story. Then, years later, she wrote a couple more books set in the same universe, set after the fact, which kind of delves into more of the mythos of the world, um, and kind of, in a way, pokes at the the dark in a, or not really the dark, but some of the other things that, that popped up, some of the other uh, antagonists. <clears throat> and it is really quite interesting. The way everything is laid out, the way she circumvents normal uh, beliefs. Uh, when I first read this book, I, spoiler alert, if you don't want to know, I'll let you shut the video off here. Goodbye, good luck. Uh, now, for those of you who don't mind spoilers, I find it very interesting that she circumvents the, the normal belief. Because when I first read this series, I got to the point where you meet Gil, uh, you meet Rudy, you kind of get a sense of their personalities. Rudy is the typical, you know, mechanically inclined uh, guy who likes to stand up, you know, be the man. Uh, Gil is the uh, intelligent uh, woman who knows a lot. She's a history major. She deals with ancient history, the way ancient societies interacted with each other, etc., etc. So you really get the impression from their personalities that if they were thrust into this other world, into a world of medieval times, that Gil would take on the more learned aspect. Uh, Rudy would take on the more physical aspect of things. Would go after that. But she flips that on its head. And Gil is the one that learns to fight with a sword, defend herself, uh, becomes a member of the guard, and basically becomes a soldier. Uh, well, Rudy is the one that discovers that he has an ability for magic uh, and starts in the following in the footsteps of a wizard and being a wise and learned person learning from Ingold himself very different from what is normally the case uh, very very floating of, of circumventional or circumventional listen to me I'm, I don't even know what I'm talking about uh, you'll have to forgive me hello buddy that's my cat He's telling me it's time to go for bed, because it is dark. That's why I decided to do this now. Or, well, we'll just pretend that that's why I decided to do this now, because it is dark and late at night, and it fits the atmosphere, instead of me just being, you know, overly tired and run around and I forgot about it until just now. Yeah. So, The Time of the Dark. This is a series that I do heartily recommend. Uh, to get into. It is 
very much very very much well not exactly realistic it is realistic it deals with things like being a refugee uh, trying to push people trying to survive large groups there is very much the harsh reality uh, underscoring all three of these books that not everyone is going to make it that these living conditions are cramped that unless this or that problem is taken care of they're not going to survive and winter is always a threat as this is happening towards the tail end of autumn the harvest season heading into winter it's all very well done very well orchestrated very well set out Barbara Hamley is a superb writer I would recommend any of her books especially these ones so before it gets too much later and before I ramble on and rattle off your ears uh, I'm going to recommend these books and leave you with this Chapter 1. Gil knew that it was only a dream. There was no reason for her to feel fear. She knew that the danger, the chaos, the blind, sickening nightmare terror that filled the screaming night were not real. This city with its dark, unfamiliar architecture, these fleeing crowds of panic-stricken men and women who shoved her aside, unseen, were only the vivid dregs of an overloaded subconscious, wraiths that would melt with the daylight. She knew all this. Nevertheless, she was afraid. She seemed to be standing at the foot of a flight of green marble stairs, facing into a square courtyard, surrounded by tall, peak-roofed buildings. Fleeing people were shoving past her, jostling her back against the gigantic pedestal of a Malachite statue, without seeming to be aware of her presence at all. Gasping, wild-eyed people, terrified faces, bleached corpses by the brilliance of the cold quarter moon. They were pouring out of the gabled houses, the men clutching chests or bags of money, the women jewels, lapdogs, or children crying in uncomprehending terror. Their hair was wild from sleep, for it was deep night. Some of them were dressed, but many were naked or tripping over bedclothes hastily snatched, and Gil could smell the rank, terror sweat of their bodies as they brushed against her. None of them saw her. None of them stopped. They stumbled frantically up those vast steps of moonlit marble, through the dark arch of the gates at the top, and out into the clamoring streets of the stricken city beyond. What city? Gil wondered confusedly. And why am I afraid? This is only a dream. But she knew. In her heart, she knew as things are known in dreams, that this scene of frenzied escape was even now being repeated, like the hundredfold reflections in a doubled mirror, everywhere in the city around her. The knowledge and the horror created a chill that crept along her skin, crawled worm-like through her guts. They all felt it too, for not a man would stop to lean on the pillar behind her, nor a woman stumble on the steps at her feet. They looked back, with the blank, wide eyes of madness, their frenzied gaze drawn as if against their will to the cy cyclopean doors of the ancient time-greened bronze that dominated the wall opposite. It was from these that they fled. It was behind this monstrous trapezoidal gateway that the horror was building as water builds behind a weakening dam, a soft, shifting, bodiless evil an unspeakable eruption into the land of the living from out of the black abysses of space and time. And that I leave you with. For this week, you should be reading The Time of the Dark by Barbara Hambly. For now, good luck. <laughs>